What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. Welcome to our daily show. We discuss everything going on here in our country that you need to know about, including money, investing, the stock market, the fourth stimulus package update, and stimulus check update. Congress is considering a new round of stimulus checks to fight inflation and the high price of gasoline here in the United States. We're going to talk about it in this episode. And if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, make sure to click the subscribe button down below so you don't miss out on new episodes that come out here every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's completely free to subscribe. So make sure to click the subscribe button right now if you haven't yet. Uh, and also, don't forget to hit the like button for us down below. Let's jump right in. The price of oil is going down. Remember, oil, the price of oil, is traded globally, not just here in the U.S. Largely, the price of oil is about the same across the globe. Um, of course, different currencies and things like that here. Um, but the price of oil is below $100 or around $100 here. You can see the price of WTI crude is at $98 a barrel, fluctuating here by the hour. Uh, the price of Brent crude is at 102 This is way down from the high here. Um, days ago, this was this hit, hit a high of 139 uh, was in the 130s here. And uh, down significantly, way down. I mean, this is down like 30% because, I mean, we were in the 130s, 139. And, um, but yet gas prices have not really come down here in the U.S. I mean, only a few pennies, only a few pennies. Um, the current average right now for gasoline in the U.S. is at $4.30. The high was $4.33. $4.33. So we've only come down three cents, which is <laughs> like zero point nothing. So we've come down like one percent, less than one percent. And um, yet the price of oil has come down 30 percent. Disregard this point two, you know, plus two percent. That's just what it's come up in like the last, you know, hour to, you know, last you know a couple hours okay that's mean this this was down below um a hundred dollars a barrel it's come up two dollars okay just disregard that that green okay um but this is um this is this is just it's, it's so painful it's so painful and this is why democrats want to do exactly this they want to tax oil companies and issue stimulus checks, issue these quarterly stimulus checks to Americans by taxing oil companies on their egregious profits because that's exactly what they're doing. They're gouging the American consumers. So if the price of oil is, you can see here, Democrats have unveiled a plan and they have an actual bill to issue quarterly checks every three months um, to Americans. By taxing the oil companies, posting huge profits, these oil companies are posting record profits, the highest profits they've ever profited ever because of the price of gas right now. So the price of gas is, is at record highs. I mean, the highest price ever was 433 in the history of ever. And um, I'll scroll down here a little bit. You can see how much it's gone up here. A month ago, it was 351. Now it's 430. And um, you can also see here the highest price ever recorded was 433, just five, you know, six days ago. And diesel, the highest price ever was 513 a day later on March 12th. Okay. So these are the highest prices recorded ever 513 and 433. And right now it's it's 510 and 430. But oil is down so much. Oil is down 30% since then. Uh, I'll get to that here, uh, those here in a second. So why isn't gas down 30%? Gas should be down to, well, let me see here. 10% would be 43 cents. So 30 cents would be around a dollar twenty less. So a dollar twenty less would be like around $3, $3.10, that's where we should be around. We should be around $3.10 a barrel or, or a gallon. And, and we're not. 
And this is exactly why the American people are mad. And the lawmakers are mad. You know, good for the lawmakers for actually trying to step up for the American citizens, for us, because, you know, good for them. They're elected officials, and they're actually trying to do something here. We also have governors of states doing something as well, trying to, uh, or actually doing. We have a lot of state governors actually um, issuing proposing different states doing different things. Florida has agreed to a one-month gas tax break. So there'll be no sales tax, uh, or not sales tax, but gas tax for the state, um, for the state of Florida. So um, this will be in October. You can see the headline here. This is from the Orlando uh, Sentinel. Um, so one month right before the governor's election. Does it state how much that equates to? Yeah, in the state of Florida, it's 26.5 cents per gallon in the state. Okay. Yeah, I saw something similar in another. Yeah. Like some states are anywhere from like 18 cents to some states are over 30 cents a gallon. Some states are actually even 50 cents a gallon. Ooh. Yeah, it really just depends. Mississippi is actually weighing suspending the state gas tax for six months. So Florida just actually passed it for one month. Mississippi is weighing suspending it for six months. That's pretty significant. Yeah. And they're actually weighing... So how do you think that works? Do you think that it's the state is going to pay that to the federal government? It's not the federal government. It's a state tax. So the Ooh. state doesn't take in the money. So like right here, it says um, they're proposing giving the department $215 million from the capital expense fund to make up for the temporary loss. So yeah, it's state money. The, the, now the federal government also has a federal government tax. Which of, they could suspend if they wanted to. And they're right? thinking about it. They're trying to do it. That's a possibility as well. So there could be a double. That would be very So it could helpful. be the federal government's 18.6, and then there could be states doing it as well. So there could be a double savings on tax as well. I'll show an interview here on that in just a second, or just a second. Mississippi has also said they want to phase out the state's income tax as well. So they actually could be removing the state income tax as well as an additional um, stimulus type program where state income tax could be completely gone. Now there's a couple of reasons why oil has fallen below a hundred dollars. Will they stay below a hundred dollars? Will they go back up? A lot of it depends on the war, but there's a couple other reasons why. Um, there's been a surprise crude inventory build, which has raised it. The American Petroleum Institute estimated that there was a surprise build this week for crude oil of 3.75 million barrels compared to the analyst predictions of 1.865 million barrels, which is pretty much about double, about double. U.S. crude inventories have shed some 73 million barrels since the start of 2021 and about 16 million barrels since 2020. So that actually brought down the price of oil. Because remember, oil is basically traded on a stock market-like platform. So uh, when that news came out, the price of oil went down. Also, some people think that um, because Russia's just not doing well at all in Ukraine and running out of supplies and money, that... Uh, they may be nearing an end, so to speak. And um, again, this is speculation, but this also could go on for months. I mean, you can let me know your thoughts here. This is where, you know, if you ever heard that the stock market is speculative, uh, well, so is the oil market, <laughs> so is commodities, so is stocks. Um, and well, that's what is driving the oil market as well. The price of oil is literally traded. So 
that has actually been driving the price of oil down right now. But the price of gas hasn't come down. And uh, that's where we see headlines like this. AAA says it's unclear when gas prices will begin to trend down. As I showed you, it's only come down a few cents, a few cents. Uh, I've seen some comments. Some people said it, it's come down 10 cents or so in their area. Um, but it's, it's really disappointing that the gas companies take advantage of people. And uh, it would be really nice to see uh, Congress step in and, uh, I don't know, pass something that... Uh, dare I say, punishes these gas companies or, I don't know, does something that prevents this from happening, right? Or does something that um, helps the American people, right? Helps the American people, you know, right now because, uh, you know, you think about the child tax credits that were $300 a month. Um, there's proposals right now that could do the same thing for inflation. Um, we have several different type of proposals right now that could do the same thing for inflation. We have the other, you know, one right here, um, literally from Democrats. It's it's co-sponsored by Bernie Sanders. It's co-sponsored by Democratic um, Representative Ro Khanna. Uh, it has multiple different co-sponsors here in Congress. It's an actual bill to tax the oil companies and redistribute it, distribute the money. Um, in quarterly checks to Americans. That would be every three months. So, um, and here's kind of the interview that uh, I was talking with my wife here on camera with you about, or she was off camera. Um, but the government says that uh, anything's on the table. Check this out. Kelly, American consumers are continuing to shoulder high costs from those sanctions on Russia with energy uncertainty driving up prices at the pump. And today I sat down exclusively with the Deputy Treasury Secretary Wally Adiemo to discuss the next wave of sanctions and the domestic policies that could offset them, like a possible suspension of the federal gas tax currently under discussion. At what point do you think the administration would say this has gotten bad enough that we need to pull that lever? I want to make clear to you that we're considering all options, and we know the best option to reduce gas prices is to increase the supply. Uh, the challenge with some of the proposals I've seen that are around um, tax cuts is that most of that money will go into the pocket of producers. Our goal actually is to make sure that we increase the supply. That's why the president has been focused on the strategic petroleum reserve, releasing more oil into the market to reduce the cost. That's why we've called on domestic producers and international producers to put more supply into the market. Today in America, there are 9,000 permits available for domestic producers. In the first year of the Biden administration, more oil and gas was produced than in the first year of the but Trump administration. But there's been a general chilling effect by the rhetoric of the administration and the communications with the industry. Granted, some of that is changing now, uh, but, but how can you say to these companies you need to start drilling more when the posture of the administration for the last 12 months has been we are going to be moving away from fossil fuels? I don't think those things are inconsistent. 9,000 leases being available to oil and gas producers in this country is a significant number. Last year, in the first year of the Biden administration, more oil and gas was pumped than in the first year of the Trump administration because we've created an environment. But what the president has said is that while we want additional supply today, we ultimately do want to move towards a clean energy future. As for other domestic priorities, Adeyemo tells me House Democrats are on board to extend the child tax credit and that President Biden will work on garnering support from the Senate for that and for other agenda items like pausing student loan payments even beyond the May 1st deadline currently. Kelly. All right, Kayla, while we have you, also some big news on the Fed as uh, West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin indicates he wouldn't support Sarah Bloom Raskin. Does that effectively mean the end of the road for her at the Fed? Not quite yet, Kelly. The White House is standing behind the Raskin nomination and says at this hour that they are working on shoring up bipartisan support, i.e. getting at least one Republican on board with her nomination to be able to move it forward. Raskin, remember, has been confirmed twice before in 2010 to the Fed Board of Governors in 2014 as Deputy Treasury of the Secretary herself. But both of those, Kelly, were vo voice votes, meaning that 
No individual lawmaker had to put their name on the record as to how they were voting for Raskin. So it's hard to go through the list and say, here where we here's where we think we have support and where we know we don't, because there's no there's no historical record there, unlike for other nominees. Is there a backup to that backup plan? Uh, well, certainly, if you ask the progressive camp, uh, there is not. This is really the nominee that they want. Uh, and you can see the White House is not giving up hope just yet. Absolutely. Kayla, thank you. We appreciate it. Kayla Tausche from the White House. Another question I always uh, get in the comments is, uh, open up the Keystone Pipeline. You know, and uh, I've kind of thought that, too, here as well. Uh, but remember, it's a pipeline. It doesn't uh, produce oil. And I'll also show you this here on the screen. Could the Keystone Pipeline help lower gas prices? Remember, this is the pipeline that Biden closed when he first came into office. Um, this is from Yahoo News, also uh, kind of republished by CBS News. So two nonpartisan um, news outlets. They don't really lean left. They don't really lean right. They're not Republican, not Democrat. So I thought this, this was a uh, good article here. So check this out. So you, you see things like, like here, Texas Representative Dan Crenshaw, who has urged Biden administration to ramp up domestic oil production, uh, said in a tweet the day before Russia's February 24th attack that the Keystone Project would have produced 830,000 barrels of crude oil per day and says, stop importing Russia, start producing oil, which we have stopped produce, uh, importing from Russia. This is not really the correct word here. It doesn't produce oil. It's a pipeline. It transports oil. And you'll see here later on here, uh, the root of the problem. It's important to understand what's contributing to the high prices of oil in the first place. Remember, oil's going up around the world. Oil's traded on a global platform, a stock market-like platform, uh, not just in the U.S. Oil's up literally in every country around the world. Uh, unless it's like Saudi Arabia and they're just not selling it. They're just keeping it for themselves or, or something along those lines. Um, but uh, Gregory Nemet, professor of the public affairs at the University of Wisconsin's Madison, Wisconsin Energy Institute, pointed out that the cost of oil has steadily increased since last fall when it was around $70 a barrel to more than $130 last week, almost doubling. But again, now it's around $100 a barrel. So it's, it's come down significantly, but the price of gas has not come down yet. That initial jump in the cost of crude was driven by the economic recovery, which boosted demand by consumers and businesses, and that had been dampened by the pandemic. A lot more transportation, people driving and flying around, people more demand for oil. And that supply doesn't always quickly respond to that kind of shock in demand. The war in Ukraine also plays a role, although it was not the instigator of the increase. Quote, whenever there's political instability in places that produce a lot of oil, markets react. And we've seen this before in Saudi Arabia when there's you know, political instability going over there, or there's even attacks on oil uh, facilities and stuff like that. And it's not necessarily that they're saying, oh, there's not enough oil. It's, oh, there's a lot more risk now than there was before. The U.S. imported an average of 209,000 barrels of oil from Russia in 2021, according to the American Fuel of Petrochemical Manufacturers, as well as 500,000 barrels per day of other petroleum products. This makes up about 3% of U.S. crude oil imports and 1% of other crude oil processed in the U.S. Keystone XL, an expansion of the existing North American pipeline, would have carried 800,000 barrels of crude oil from Alberta, Canada to Nebraska daily. It would have carried. It doesn't produce oil. It just transports it. It just carries it. At the time that Biden halted its, con its construction, the $8 billion expansion was only about 8% complete. And I think a lot of people don't realize that. It would have costed $8 billion, and it was only about 8% complete. So it doesn't produce oil. 
it's only 8% complete and it would have costed $8 billion. Just so everybody's kind of on the same page here because I don't think that most people realize that. I don't think that most people realize all that. Yet many experts agree that moving ahead with the pipeline wouldn't have prevented U.S. gas prices from climbing to a record high. Expanding the Keystone would have increased global oil production by less than 1%, an amount they explained is almost negligible. I mean, you can see it right here. This is from a not-Democrat, not-Republican source. I can see why people make that connection, but in terms of gasoline prices and oil prices, it's just something it's better to just ignore because it would have no impact. Quote, the Keystone Pipeline, under the best circumstances, if you were a proponent of seeing it completed, wouldn't be completed yet. It wouldn't be online, and it wouldn't be pumping oil until year 2023. So the idea that somehow the president's position on the pipeline that would still not be pumping oil emboldened Putin to invade Ukraine is still so far-fetched as to be incredible. And the reason he shut it down is because it's a very dirty type of oil that it would have transported, and environmentalists were against it, and it had been taking years to complete, and it's this whole big drama that you can Google one day if you want to look into it. Um, it had been having drama for years and years and years uh, into it. Um, it's a Democrat versus Republican thing, and uh, nonetheless, it's one of the first things he took. But like I said, it still had years of complete completion. It was only 8% completed. So it wasn't operational. It doesn't produce oil. It only transports the oil. So you can let me know your thoughts here in the comments, but I just wanted to throw that in there uh, just so everybody's clear on that, that issue as well. Uh, but let me know your thoughts. I'll keep you up to date here with everything. Hopefully we will see some uh, gas prices come down, help with gas prices as well, stimulus checks, uh, reducing the gas tax. Uh, we have a lot of different things in play right now. So make sure to subscribe to our channel down below. New videos come out here every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Subscribing is completely free to do so, and I will keep you up to date here. Don't miss out on any new videos at this point. You can click here to watch my newest video next. And you can click here to see how there could be potential $1,100 stimulus checks here uh, that have just been proposed as well. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.